the Baltimore riots last week were, were not just about police brutality. That is the surface of the issue, but what really these riots were about, they were a commentary, a message to the world about the sad state of affairs that the black family has become. And if you look at the, the Baltimore riots and compare them to the riots of Crown Heights, Los Angeles in 1992, um, and even Ferguson a couple of years ago, you'll see that the reasons for the rioting were completely different. And even the 60s, the reasons for the rioting were completely different. And this time, it really was about this, this black family and how it has pretty much fallen completely apart. The entire structures in the black community have collapsed. And this is where we have the big problem. A lot of people think that they're going to fix this real easy. Like President Obama is coming here to New York talking about my brother's keeper and mentoring people, but when, when you destroy the family structure, nothing can work. Now, God created the family to work a certain way, and he created an order for things to work in a certain way. That order is like this. It's God, Jesus, who is the Son of God, man, who is God's leader, the woman, and the children. But over the last 40 years, um, the order has been pretty much thrown out of the God's order has been tossed aside and replaced by an order created by white liberals, white feminists, and black women. And in that order, it runs like this. You have your white Jesus, who is your white man or your white supremacist. You have your, your um, white liberal, your white feminist, your black woman, who is the head of the family, um, the black children, the pets, and then maybe your black man at the bottom. And nothing can work in an order that, 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 that are like that. This order is only going to get you chaos. And this is what happened in Baltimore. And it was building up over time because we've had two generations of dysfunctional adults roaming around. And this is the fruit, this is the, this is the seeds that we planted way back in the late 60s with this great society that Lyndon Johnson and the Democrats created. And now it's reaping this bitter harvest, which is a completely collapsed black family. And if you really look at it, the whole black leadership is completely collapsed. Because again, over the last 40 years, what culture has been taught from the black mother to her children and what culture has been taught to, to black society? Nothing but chaos and dysfunction. We have not create without the father there to be the leader and, create, and do things under God's authority, nothing is going to work. And I looked at those Baltimore riots, and they were a commentary on the sad state of affairs that the black family has become. I mean, we've had 40 years of great society programs, yet our family is, is still in ruins. And the reason why it's in ruins is because the father is not in the home teaching his children, especially teaching his boys, how to be men. A lot of people came up with this idea back in the 60s and the, and the 70s, thinking that, you know, a woman could teach a boy to become a man, but now... We pretty much see that that's just not possible. Boys cannot be taught to be men by women. It's just illogical. God did not make it to be that way. He made the mother, you know, to teach the girl, but he made the father to teach the boy because it's patriarchal. I mean, just like God and Jesus are father and son, men and men are fathers are supposed to be father and son. And these policies that were created in the great society, the welfare policies and the establishment of the welfare state, have led to the total destruction of the black family in America. And this is where we, these, these situations keep erupting, because without that father there to be the leader and to be the head of the family and to establish the values for the family, everything just falls apart time after time after time. And what happened in Baltimore really was a condemning statement about this black family, because if you look at it, this was a majority black city this was with a black mayor, a black city council, um, black police commissioner, black infrastructure, yet we still have riots. And that really was a commentary on this black family. You can say what you want about black rage and all that stuff. The reason for the rage is because there is no authority in the home. How can you have a family where you have a female authority figure? Men don't respect that. Even girls don't respect that. You need a male authority figure that is under the authority of God in order to have a functional family unit. There is no function in the black family these days, and this is why we have so much chaos 
in the black community because the family is completely out of order. And even what's even worse is our leadership is completely collapsed because if we look at our pastors again, who are supposed to be, you know, God's, God's own ministers, they're not even following the order of God themselves. They're completely out of order. Um, they're preaching some prosperity preaching. They're not preaching, you know, the, 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 um, the true word of God. They're not talking about how the woman is supposed to be the help me. Because, again, they, they know that the woman controls the economy, black woman controls the economy, and they want to get into her purse and her panties. And that's what they want. So they're not, they're not preaching the true word of God and preaching, teaching, you know, the next generation. Same thing with our civil rights leaders who go around marching in circles talking about no justice, no peace. When they, then it shows, you know, I look at the whole Freddie Gray and the Michael Brown and the Eric Garner and the Trayvon Martin situation, and it clearly shows me a total, again, the collapse of the family and the collapse of leadership in the black community. And this total collapse is why nothing gets done, because I look at it, all the marching and protesting is just going around in circles, because, again, there, there are no men to set goals, and, you know, you need to have a set of goals. Just marching and saying the general word justice doesn't make it happen. You have to have concrete plans. If you look at the old civil rights movement, there were a lot of, there were men in leadership positions and they had plans for what they wanted to do and what direction they wanted to go in. And they had a comprehensive strategy. I mean, the Montgomery bus boycott wasn't just boycotting the buses. It was also um, having cars ready to um, take people to and from work. It was also about boycotting the businesses of those areas so that things could get done. And it was about people coming together and organizing. You don't see that with these recent police brutality um, protests. You just don't see any organization. I look at the whole Eric Garner situation here in New York, and there was no long-term set of goals. It was just sitting around waiting. And you look, and what's really embarrassing about this here in New York is that while these officers in Baltimore have been indicted, the officer who choked out Eric Garner and the black female supervisor who watched this happen still are have their jobs, still are collecting checks, and still are adding money to their pension. And that's all because our leadership here in the community, your Al Sharptons and the rest of them, have not did not set a goal to get this man fired. And that should have been one of the goals. I mean, if you really want to stop this police brutality, you really have to have a plan to attack the culture that's within. And there is no plan to attack the culture from within. And, you know, make the, set the standard. Because, again, this is the big problem in the black community. There is no leadership because, again, God's leader has been taken out of the picture for the last 40 years. And this is the bitter harvest that we're reaping, is that these children have no direction, no sense of focus. Because um, I see it, in my, my family member who worked, who worked in education saw the exact same pattern of behavior. No direction, no focus, people just walking around, doing whatever they want. I mean, just thinking that they're, they're accomplishing something, but they're really going nowhere. And this is why, you know, time after time, we have these protests and then nothing comes of it because nobody really has a comprehensive plan. I mean, I look at the whole Baltimore riots thing and it's like the only reason, real reason why they indicted those cops is because I think Major League Baseball made some phone calls because they were about to lose a bunch of money. And a couple of those business owners who didn't get their um, properties looted called up and, and made some calls to the politi politicians and they, they wanted to get this taken care of because they said they were because they were losing hundreds of millions of dollars a day in revenue from travel and tourism and other areas. But, you know, your average Negro, they don't have the, the, the critical thinking skills to create a strategy to think about doing something on an economic level to stop police brutality because this is how you, you stop it. Because if you look at, you know, things like 9-11, I mean, for all the, I mean, these, these, these Arabs pretty much hijacked planes and blew up the world, destroyed the World Trade Center, yet there was no racial profiling, no police harassment, and the reason why is because of economic reasons. And because, you know, these colleges and universities did not want to lose all that money from, from student visas and, student, and, and um, you know, students traveling abroad. They didn't want to lose all that money. Otherwise, they would have just closed the border and called it a day, but they didn't want to lose that money. And, that's the way, and also, the, the Arabs have a lot of economic power um, in other areas like that OPEC oil embargo from the 70s. So the U.S. really didn't want to alienate those Middle Eastern countries. Otherwise, I think they would have been just like the way they treated black people. But the whole thing is that because of the economic power and the political influence, nothing was done. This is after blowing up, destroying the whole World Trade Center and the Pentagon and all those, all those people losing their lives. 
there was no, you know, retaliation econ retaliation because of the economic political power. Same thing with um, Asians, the same thing with Hispanics. They don't want to alienate those groups, but the whole thing is that black people don't want to flex their economic muscles. And this is something that, they, that should have been done all the way back when Michael Brown and Eric Garner did not get indictments. I mean, I looked at that window of opportunity that was missed by your NAACP, your Al Sharpton, and the rest of these people who were just planning marches and protests to Washington. This is Black Friday, the biggest shopping day of the year. You know what would have had an impact? People seeing no black people in the store. People seeing empty malls. That would have had an impact. That would have made a most powerful message, the most powerful message against police brutality that the world would have seen. That, you know what? People don't feel safe shopping because of this police brutality, so they're going to stay home. People don't feel safe going to the movies because of police brutality, so they're going to stay home. And that would have sent a message that the CEOs of all of these corporations would have made, and they would have pretty much changed the game. Because you got to understand that economic power is what leads to political power. And this is something that, you know, most Negroes don't understand. They think that it's just marching and protesting. That's the surface. That's not going to get justice. You really have to have a way of making, of setting goals and getting things done. And this is one of the big problems because, again, it all goes back to that family structure because the family structure has been, again, completely destroyed. And without that father in that role of authority figure and that father in the role of leader, you really can't accomplish anything because... He is, again, God's natural leader, and he is the head of the family, and we haven't had a head of the family in the black community, again, for 40 years, and this is why, you know, many of these males are so defiant against their, um, against authority, and they have so many problems in the world, because, again, there's nobody there for them, and Barack Obama thinks that, you know, he's going to bring in some mentors and stuff in a My Brother's Keeper program, nobody is going to replace God's leader. Nobody's going to, you, we need this father back in the home. I don't care what anybody says. If that father is not there, then nothing is going to get done. Your own, your community is only going to continue to fall apart and continue to get worse without this father in the home to model manhood for his, one, model manhood for his boys, and two, model manhood for his girls. Because as the children see the father treating the mother, this is how they learn how to treat each other. And without this father in the home, Nothing is going to get done. I don't care how many welfare programs you make. I don't care how many um, job training programs. I don't care what you put out here. Nothing is going to work because it does not fit within God's natural order, and it does not follow, you know, God, the way God established the family. And this is what's happening, you know, here with the black communities. That we our problem is our family has been destroyed, and without a family unit, you cannot. All you're going to get is chaos, and this is what we've had. In the black community and it's gotten worse because this what is it um second generation or third generation really have imbibed some seriously dysfunctional values now i came from the first generation and maybe we got some semblance of values but the one the children born after that didn't get less and the ones born in the in the late 1990s early 2000s got even less than that this is why we saw what we saw in baltimore because the values and the culture that was taught to these children has completely changed and it's become extremely dysfunctional. I mean, this is why we have people marching around in circles again with no plan and no structure because they know understand how to set goals or set a direction or, you know, even how to make things work for themselves. So they don't even understand how to make things work. And then you have these old civil rights dinosaurs and Negro pastors out here exploiting these poor kids and taking advantage of a situation so that they can, you know, get some money grant money from the federal government um, for a program that they know is not going to work. None of these programs, again, aren't going to work without that father in the home. This is the only way you're going to get things done. And the sad part is that we have not, because a lot of these men have not been taught how to be men by other men, a lot of them aren't ready for fatherhood. But maybe, I don't know, maybe it can work. Because, again, this is under the only way things can work is if, if the black family goes back to being under God's authority because I see where it really where the decline really happened and that was you know 40 years ago with this great 50 40 50 years ago with this great society programs and you know black people walking away from the original church which was rooted in God and they walked away to pursue all these other areas and pursue all these other paths and now we see how lost and disconnected 
your black community is because our family is in ruins. We have the woman running the household, the woman controlling the purse strings, and the woman teaching her children a culture of consumerism, and they're not learning, you know, family values, family traditions, and learning how a family structure truly works. Because again, without this father to lead the family, nothing is getting done. I look at the family right now, and it, it's this is why you have havoc every eight, every year or so. I mean, even in cities like here in New York, I mean, when the minute it gets warm, we have a whole bunch. Of, we had like a couple of weeks ago, we had a couple of shooting. We had like thirteen shootings. And again, that's a lot of people talked about black rage. No, that has to do with this father not being in the home and not teaching his kids values. And more importantly, you know, reinforcing the rules and regulations of his home, making sure that his kids are in at a certain hour, making sure that their homework is done, um, enforcing discipline and keeping discipline consistent. This is the, what the father does because he is the leader. He sets the tone for the household. He sets the tone for the family. And he establishes the order for the family because he is the authority figure. And he teaches his boys how to respect male, males and male authority. And because the, a lot of these boys grew up in these female-headed households, they had learned not to have respect for other men and not learned not to have respect for the authority of men and learned not to have respect for other men. And that's all because everything he is learning is about pleasing females, appeasing females, because the, the only person who is an authority figure in his home is this black woman. And... That's not her role. That's not what God intended, made for her to do. He made her to be the help and the support. He made her to be the teacher of culture. And he made her to, um, you know, take care of the home and take care of the children. And to reinforce the idea that the father is an authority figure. The father is the head of the family. And when the father says something, it's pretty much done. Because, again, this is the same way, um, same order that is related to God and to Jesus. Is that, you know, when the father tells you to do something... Father in heaven tells you to do something, you have to do it. And this is the same order that is established in our own families and it's, that's in every other family in the world. They all follow a patriarchal order. The only family, the only order, that, the only people following a matriarchal order are your African American women. And we look at the end result of that 40 years later. And that's these Baltimore riots. They pretty much showed me, you know, it was not about police brutality, it was an opportunity you opportunity used to loot and to destroy and people are thinking that it's just about one thing it's not more it's the whole thing is that it's a commentary on this damaged family and the only way to get this family right is to bring back that father in one bring back that father in a home and that's going to be that's going to be a hard struggle because a lot of time because with this all this feminism that people have imbibed all these dysfunctional ideals that have been promoted by madison avenue advertisers and hollywood movie studios you know this strong independent black woman this this ideology that this woman can do it on her own, but when we go back to her own Bible, you know, that, that they, these black women, 80% of them are Christians, they go back to their Bible, and what did God say about the family? He said the man was the head of the family, yet you have your strong, independent black woman saying that she is the head of the family, she is a leader, and this is not true at all. And when we look at, our, when we look at the Bible and what it says about who is the head of the family, he said the man is the head of the family, and he said the man is the leader. And, but yet, your black woman is still trying to put the square peg of feminism and white liberalism and white supremacy into God's round hole. And it's, not, it's never going to work. It never will work. And you will never tell God that he is wrong. And this is the big problem with um, the black community regarding civil rights these days. They keep trying to go and put these square pegs in the round holes. And they keep going around and around. And def again, the definition of insanity is doing the exact same thing and expecting a different result. Marching and protesting is is like doing the exact same thing and expecting a different result. Uh, we've been doing this for about, about ever since Trayvon Martin was killed, and the result continues to be the same, yet black people continue to do the exact same thing. And nothing is going to change until, you know, black people decide, you know, it's time for you to change and change your approaches and get this family back in order. Because I look at it, and the black family, again, how can you have a family when 70% of the families are run by single mothers? How can you have order and, you know, a functional community when you have 80% of black men unemployed? If you look at, these, at, 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 at the bigger picture, you will see that the only way to fix this, again, is to bring that father in the home. Now, a lot of people talk about jobs and stuff like that. The man has to be rebuilt, like David Carroll talked about in his video. 
um, a long time ago, or one of his videos. The black man has to be re rebuilt. And I have to agree with him that the black man has to be rebuilt for the following reason. Again, the black man is God's leader. The black man is the head of the family. The black man sets the tone for the family. The black man pretty much is the authority figure in the family. And if he's not rebuilt to be that authority figure and that leader um, under God's authority, you're not going to have a family. And you're not going to be able to control the community. All you're going to have is what you have right now with these single mother households is a lot of chaos, a lot of havoc, because, again, these, these boys and these girls do not respect the authority of this black woman. They do not see her as an authority figure. They cannot, it is not her job to do it on her own. And for the last 40 years, she's been telling God that he's wrong. And we look at this picture. I'm like, you keep trying to tell God that he's a liar. And he keeps, trying, and he keeps telling you that, that, you're not, that, you're, that I'm not a liar. And that I, every other family follows the order that I put. And they're doing okay. But they look at yours which you keep trying to tell me that you're going to put this square peg in this round hole, and what happens is you get every time the same thing. And the whole thing is that it all fits into this family and how it's falling apart. And the family is falling apart again because everybody wants to go outside of the order of God. They want to follow these other paths. They want to go on these other directions like this liberal is, you know, these, these dysfunctional pathways this liberal and this feminist have put in this place. And you're never going to go anywhere. Unless, you know, the black community starts to get right with God and get his family right with God. And that's the way I see the, the Baltimore riots. I see it as a condemning statement on this black family. I see it as a condemning statement, you know, on the failure of our black leadership because they submitted to white liberal policy instead of standing on the word of God. They, they stood there and, you know, went along. Your Al Sharptons, your NAACPs, your, your pro-black militants, all of them. They all went in with those white liberal policies and these white feminist policies. And they pretty much sold the black community out and threw the black family under the bus. And But then these same people are expecting, you know, even your black pastors threw your black family under the bus. And you're expecting the community of people to have values and traditions when there are no values and traditions. If you didn't value your community... Why should other people value that your community? And again, it goes back to your Black Lives Matter. If a black life didn't matter to these people back in the 60s, why do you expect people in 2015 to value their own lives? How do you expect black, black people to value their own lives? Because you didn't value it in the 1960s. In the 1970s, your grandmothers and your great-grandmothers didn't value it then. I mean, they gave their bodies away and with, to have um, intercourse with whatever dusty, two-bit, jive-time Negro... And they didn't think about um, the fruit that they were bearing. They just put seeds in the ground, didn't think about the fruit they were bearing. And, it's, and then you, you expect to get, you know, a great harvest. Again, it goes back to something um, that was said in the Bible again. What you reap is what you sow. And I'll even go back to Charles Stanley and something he said about you reap more than you sow, later than you sow, and greater than you sow. Because he said that a long time ago. And I, I took that and said, yeah, that's true. You put the seeds in the ground, you put these seeds in the ground, you follow these feminists, you follow these liberals and their policies, you put these seeds in the ground, and now you're expecting this great harvest of college graduates and business professionals, and then you wonder why you have a harvest of dusty Negroes um, and, and, and a third or fourth generation of hood rats, and this is the reason why you have this, because you put these seeds in the ground. You didn't follow God's order, you didn't follow God's instructions, and now you're wondering why you've got a whole bunch of thorns and briars in the ground coming up and this is the bitter harvest that the black community has pretty much reaped you've put this up you put this here for 40 years and now you're wondering why your kids are the most directionless the most aimless why your dropout rate is through the roof why your unemployment rate is through the roof because you didn't build you didn't take the time back then you you bought into the snake oil again of the liberal the feminist and every other person because again didn't understand that freedom isn't free. And the whole thing is that I look at the integration and all that stuff. People just didn't understand what freedom is. And they didn't understand, you know, with, with, with that power came a responsibility. Again, people wanted, they wanted their civil rights, but they didn't understand that with rights, you know, came responsibility. And the responsibility was to, towards taking care of that family, protecting that family, protecting the family infrastructure. It wasn't, it didn't mean I get to be a part of, um, everybody else's America instead of trying to protect their own. I mean, every other ethnic group, 
when they get their piece of the pie, they protect the pie, not only the pie, piece of the pie they got, they protect the recipe they got. But the Negro, on the other hand, did not protect his pie, he did not protect his recipe, and he put seeds in the ground that have come up to reap this bitter harvest. And this bitter harvest is not going to get any better anytime soon. And but the only way to the only solution as I see it is to get this father back in the home, bring this father back into the community. And, you know, start really teaching these boys how to be, because the only man who can teach a man is another man, and we don't have that. We have women trying to teach boys to be men. We have women trying to teach girls how to be girls. And without the authority of a man, that's also useless, because they have to learn how to work with a man. This is why your family can't work at all, because they've seen, you know, for 40 years, two generations, your black woman at odds with your black man. And... How can you learn how to have a functional and healthy family unit when you've learned how to be an adversary to a man instead of learning how to cooperate and work with his leadership? And better yet, if you don't like this man, the way this man's program works, don't get involved with him. You can't have a family if, if people don't understand their roles in the family, how the family works. And this is why your, fam this is why your black community is in the ruins that it is, it's in. I mean, look at the statistics. I mean... In the 1960s, we only had 7% of the black community had single mothers. And now in 2015, we have close to 74, 75% of black women, um, black families born to single mothers. And that's all, again, due to people walking away from the order of God and the natural order of the black family towards these white liberal policies and, the, and this white feminist movement. And we all saw the condemning statement, which was this is what this is all about. The Baltimore riots, again, were a real condemning statement about this black family. And the only way, again, to fix it is to let that father in the home. But again, there are too many people making money off of the black woman and her controlling the purse strings to really, they don't want to change it. They don't want to change that order because they're making a whole bunch of money. As long as this black woman controls the purse strings, your Negro pastor makes money, your white liberal makes money, um, your foreign-owned stores make money. And, you know, big corporations like Nike and all these other corporations make a bunch of money because they know if the father started controlling the purse strings and controlling the dollar in the black community, the flow of those dollars is going to change. Because under a patriarchal order, it's going to be more about building and developing and not about consuming. And this is another reason why people are just, you know, they're just throwing, it's really shallow. If you really look at it, they want to come in with some more job training programs, some more, um, Talking about they want to give opportunities to black men. The only op the greatest opportunity you can give a black man is a job. I don't need a lot of these guys don't need job training. I mean, a guy like myself, I have I've got a college degree, I've got A plus certification, I've got 20 years writing experience, and it's I still is having having a hard time finding work after I lost a job in 2008. I don't need just give me a job. Just like every other black man out here, you give these black men jobs, and they will go out here and take care of their families. You give us the tools. And in a couple of years, maybe we may start our own businesses. And this is something that your liberal doesn't want happening. He doesn't want us black men to start building our own, start going from jobs to businesses because, again, that threatens his economic system. Again, he wants that matriarchal economic system to remain in place. He does not want a patriarchal black economic system to be established because he knows that a patriarchal black economic system will put him out of business. And that's something he just does not want to happen. So I look at this job market, and it they talk about the lack of opportunities. Those lack of opportunities are intentionally put there. I remember going to civil service, and I had passed the exam, and I was going to a hiring pool. And guess who was getting hired? Your black woman, your white woman, your Hispanic woman, your Hispanic man. Your black man, like myself, was pretty much left to, to um, left um, in the dust, even with the skills and the qualifications, because. Nobody wants to hire black men, as even black female HR directors or white female HR directors. They don't want to hire no black man because, again, nobody wants to see this black man rise to an authority position or to a leadership position because they know what's going to happen. These black men like myself, what we're going to do is we're going to start building businesses and building families, and they don't want that to happen because, again, black men, men naturally are builders, and that's something that, that nobody wants to happen. Not even your pro-blacks. They don't even want that to happen because, again, they get their money from the same pool of dollars from white liberals and white feminists. And this is all this is being turned into. And this is something 
Now, because your Negro doesn't have critical thinking skills, they can't see that big picture that they're trying to turn the Baltimore riots into another way for them to skim some block grant money, some nonprofit money, and a whole bunch of other dollars off the Negro's back. And what they do is they make money off the Negro by making him into a victim. And you can, I can see this happening right now because President Obama is supposed to come here and you know talk about my brother's keeper again, another non another hustle for nonprofits, but not really helping anyone. Again, the only way to help this this black family is to put this black man back in charge. And to give this black, and not to give this black man a job, but that's just a start. Because if we had more black men having their job, having jobs and controlling their families, again, that would be a start. Having him on the job, and and because all of this is about modeling manhood. Again, if I see this father, you know, coming in like I, I like what I saw with my father. I mean, I I only saw him once a week, but I saw him as an authority figure. I saw him as a leader. I saw him, you know doing the things that men do. And I also had an older brother who showed me, you know, the things that men do and modeled things like going to work and coming in on time and being reliable and being consistent. And I still model those things to this day. And some people make fun of me because I, I do things the same way all the time. But, you know, that's what I learned from my older brother and that's what I learned from my father. I learned the basics of manhood and it's like, it's like an unconscious thing because you're seeing these men do these things every day. And when you see them doing these things every day, it's mo again, that's what's modeled for you, that this is what a man does. This is what a man does in his life. Now, I, I didn't get a perfect um, thing, but I got something. And I take that and I try to apply it every day to my life. And when you see a man, you know, modeling these things for another man, it, it has an impact on his life. When you see your father getting up every morning and going to work, when you see, you know, or, or an older brother getting up, going to work, when you see... Um, men, you know, knowing how to handle themselves in social situations. When you see men um, having relationships with both men and women and being able to communicate with them and show them, you know, this is how a man handles himself. This is how a man handles um, social situations. This is how a man protects his community. Um, you know, if, if there are, if there are uh, uh, women in his family who have to get up at 2 or 3 in the, um, in 6 or 7 o'clock in the morning, and this is something I did with my own sisters, is that if, if they had, cause she had to go out early in the morning, I would go and escort her to the bus, and then I would come back for her later on. This is something that, you know, we don't see men doing. That's, that's called protecting your family, and that's something a man does, and that's what other men in other communities do. They protect their women, they support their women, so that they can support them, and we don't see these, these, these concepts modeled for men. I mean, this is what men do. Now, this one guy, you saw me at the bus stop, when they say, that's a man, that's what men do. They look out for their family, they look out for people. And that's what you're supposed to do. That's why you, your man is supposed to do. He's supposed to be the leader. We're not seeing that type of leadership, everyday leadership for men. We think that, you know, leader, leadership is like something like you're Al Sharpton, you know, getting on a podium and marching. No, your father is a very powerful leader. Again, he is God's leader, and this is the model that he does. Because when he does these things, he is doing, you know, God's work. Because that's what God made the father, father of the home to be. And to be just like just like our father in heaven. He meant to be, for that to be. And when you look at your black family, you don't see that leadership in many in almost 70, 75 percent of the cases. You see the woman leading. And this is why we had, you know, these children of the corn um, tearing up their own neighborhoods just like they did in Ferguson. It's like a vicious cycle because everybody th keeps thinking that, again, it's just police brutality. No, we have to get this black family straight. And that's something we cannot do just with... Um, some government programs or some other things, we have to do that ourselves. And this is the whole thing that I've, I've been, I really believe is paramount to, you know, what, to getting real changes that this black family, this is, this is, this is our issue and nobody else can fix it but us. This is about us getting our family right and us getting our community right. But I don't know if our black men are ready to take the lead in their own communities because a lot of these Negro males, as I see it, they're weak, they're cowardly, um, they just don't have the backbone, they always put it on this black woman. It's it's for you to set the tone. I mean, I look at the whole um, Eric Garner and the Michael Browns, you say that you want your life to matter, well, you have to show that it matters. You have to take the lead in your own cause, and your woman can't speak for you, because I look at all of these issues, there's always a woman leading the cause. And what these guys don't understand is when your woman is leading your cause, 
you are coming from a position of weakness. And when you come from a position of weakness, nobody respects you. And this is the big problem with this Negro male, is that he doesn't understand that in order to show the world that a black man's life matters, the black man has to make that statement through not only his words, but his actions. And I don't see this black man making his life matter through his words and his actions. He is not taking the lead in his own cause. He is letting everyone else speak for him. I can honestly say that because looking at these newscasts and looking at who's speaking at these protests, I don't see young black men speaking for themselves. Everybody else speaks for themselves. I mean, when, when something happens in the Hispanic community, there are Hispanic men speaking for themselves. When there is something going on in, in the, with the gay community, gay men come out and speak for themselves. When it comes down to the black community, black men are too afraid to speak for themselves, speak on their issues, and really make the statement that they need to make. They just sit there and they want everybody else to value their lives, but the sad part is they don't value it themselves. And this is the culture that has been taught to them from their single mothers over the last 40 years. These are the seeds that were planted, and this is why you continue to have this bitter harvest, because this black man refuses to, to take charge and say, look, this is unacceptable, these are not the standards I want for my community, this is not the direction I want my community to go in, we're going to take charge of our community, and we're going to set the statement. And this is, again, I go back to all these other you know, YouTubers like Team Up and um, David Carroll talked about voting. Yeah, you can set the tone, because if you come out here and set this tone um, and say, look, Democratic Party, you're not doing what we need to do, we're going to get rid of you and get people in here to do what we need to do. We need leadership, and your community right now does not have leadership, because, again, God's leader has been removed from the table for the last 40 years, and the sons who have been taught by these single mothers have no idea on how to lead their community. They have, they have, been, li they have been listening to snake oil from pimp pastors, con men, pro-black con men who only live to exploit the black woman for a dollar and we need a new direction if you want to get this black community right and the only direction again is to put this black man back in place so that he can be God's leader and he can do and he can follow the will of God and get his community back on track. Um, that's all I have to say for this video many of the points that I have presented here in this video are in my ebook why 70% of black women are single. In that ebook, I go into detail about how your white feminist, your white supremacist, and your white liberal created policies to destroy your black family. And I also talk about how this black family has been socially engineered into this matriarchy and how this is all has to do a lot with economics and how there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes regarding the total decline of this black family and how and the reason why we're seeing so many incidents like these Baltimore riots and the Ferguson riots all this again has to do with the black community being outside the order of God and outside um, the authority of God because the black community is so far away from God's natural order that this is what the this is why we have the chaos that we have I really urge you to go out and go get why 70 percent of black women are single the ebook is only 599 but the knowledge in there Will give is far more valuable than anything you you would ever see. Um, that's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.